saw a guy driving a Prius in a blizzard. That was hilarious. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's a, let's put that on the bucket list. <laughs> He was holding on for dear life on the steering wheel, and I could tell in his head he was just thinking to himself, I'm doing this for the environment, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm behind him in a Jeep, you know, like, the environment's trying to kill you! Get out of my way! I grew up poor. I'm not ashamed to say I grew up poor. Anybody grow up poor? Nothing wrong with growing up in poverty. You learn things when you're poor that you would not know if you had money. When I was seven years old, the family car was a 1965 Chevy Impala that was not a lowrider on purpose. <laughs> we had a big family and a hoopty, man. Who knows something about a hoopty? Used to call it a jalopy, they call it a hoopty. Now, this car had no reverse because the transmission was messed up. You couldn't make a left turn because the steering column was messed up. You cannot make up jokes like this, all right? This is a testimony right now. I was seven years old when we had this hoopty you couldn't even make a left turn in. But at the age of seven, I already knew that three rights equal to left. Rich kids didn't know that. My teachers thought I was advanced. You don't want to ask my dad for directions. He'd be like, okay, man, you make a right. You make a right. You make a right. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, boy. No, the reason I came up with that one, though, is um, I have a, an in-law who's a German. Yeah, German, German. For born and raised in Germany, still lives there, Stefan. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes he says stuff that's arrogant, too, right? I mean, I, so I, I'm going to send him that. <laughs> Like, okay, like, here's an example. He loves cars, knows, loves cars, knows everything about them. So we're talking about cars, and he's, he's just, he'll say something like, I don't know how the, uh, the, the Germans would never buy the American cars, of course, because we have the German cars. <laughs> they are better engineered and designed, but why would we ever purchase something that is inferior to what we have making in our own cities? But uh, <laughs> we are not here to discuss the obvious. <laughs> I must say, I would love to see how it works in your country with also those American cars breaking down on the highway every day. It must be quite hilarious. Maybe you have the German tow trucks to come and clean up the cars. <laughs> I have two cars. Ironically, I have a Volkswagen Jetta. I know, I know, ironically. And a Ford F-150 pickup truck. Arf! I know. It's a 1989. I, I, even better, I know, I bought it for $1,000. Mainly because I hit my 40s and realized, you know what? Every now and then a man needs to haul some stuff. <laughs> That's right. And, and I got really tired of having that totally emasculating conversation with a friend who has a truck. Can I buy your truck for half a day? Because I have some man things to do, but I don't have a vehicle that does man stuff, so I just need your man thing. Can I let me use it? I'll give it right back. I know you have man stuff too all the time. I just have a little bit, just a little tiny bit, and I'll be done. And, and can I borrow your man card? Because I think I need it to drive it, right? They won't let me unless I have. Yeah. So it was worth a grand to not have that conversation. <laughs> what I didn't know about having an old pickup truck is they are so much fun to drive, especially in a big city, right? You can, first of all, you don't care what happens to them. It's an old, rusty truck. Oh, it's, it's, I'm, it's so empowering. I pull up to a four-way stop, and then I go, right? The other four <laughs> cars or three cars can figure out who's going after me, but <laughs> that's up to them, but no one's challenging the... The 89 rust bucket, coming through everybody. You feel like a tugboat with tires all around. Go ahead, bump me, I don't care. Add some character. You can help the police, that's the best. You can be a vigilante in your own neighborhood. You can you go pull out into traffic, there's a car bombing along at the speed of light, and you think, oh my gosh, if I pull out now, he will rear end me. So you do, you do, right? Like, hey, you better slow down, sporty. Woo! That, that is not the speed limit in this neighborhood. Go ahead and nest you a grill into my trailer hitch. I'll give you a tow to where you want to go. I haven't, I don't have a boat or nothing. 
So anyway, so I get, <laughs> I get home from this family gathering over in Europe, uh, hop into my Jetta, won't start. <laughs> oh, what is the problem with the German engineering? It's just <laughs> so clickety click clicky. You know why I wouldn't start? I, I, the mechanic said before I go on a long trip, I should unhook a battery cable or something, because apparently my over-engineered piece of German genius won't stop thinking about stuff the whole time I'm gone. <laughs> right, I've got this car just sitting in my driveway talking to itself for two weeks. Are the doors locked? Yes, they are locked. <laughs> we check one more time. Eins, zwei, drei, ja. The sun has gone down, lights the clock. Bing! Oh, someone is too close to the car. Alarm! Boop, 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 boop. Oh, vigilance is tiresome. Anyway, hop out of this Jetta, jump into my Ford. This thing hasn't had an oil change since I was in high school. I swear to you, it has. I put new oil in, but it just sort of goes away after a while. I just, it's this one-way oil system. One turn of the key, just You know why? Because while I was away for two weeks, my pickup wasn't thinking about squat. It was just sitting there under a tree in my backyard. Oh, 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 oh you're back? Okay, we're gonna go haul some stuff, stop an Audi? Cool, let's do this. I know it's kind of funny, but I have never felt such national pride as the moment that blue-gray smoke fired out the tailpipe of that rusty old pickup. Just, <laughs> go America! Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and I took out my iPhone and made a video of myself uh, towing the Jetta to the mechanic, right? With, with full narrative, by the way. <laughs> Stefan, look how well your car tows! Yeah! <laughs> There is no bubble on the corners! I decided I needed to get a new car. I'd had a Corolla for a decade. I felt like that was time. Uh, it was nice, except in the winters it was doing its impression of the Tokyo Drift, and I couldn't just go straight, please. And it, I had to. I needed all-wheel drive. I felt like I needed that in my life. So I went to the new shiny car dealership, the Kia dealership, if you've been there. Fantastic, fantastic selection. And I wanted the Kia Optima. I saw that, I was like, it's a heck of a vehicle. I went up to the salesman, I was like, hey, do you have any Kia Optimas with all-wheel drive? He's like, no, we don't. There's no demand, no one would buy it. I said, that's weird, because if you had one, I'd buy it tonight. He's like, I know, a lot of people would. <laughs> Did you go to the University of Phoenix for your degree? What happened here, what? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> But like a salesman, he tried to sell me on it. He tried to sell me on it, right? He's like, hey, don't worry, you don't need all-wheel drive. We have fantastic safety features, like anti-whiplash technology headrests. So you mean a headrest? What did you do different to these? That's what they've always done. What else do you have? Air-retaining tires? Tell me more about the features on this car. So I didn't get one. I didn't. I was scared. I ended up getting a Jeep, because like that's the car that I wanted. All-wheel drive, I can go on or off-road, do what I want. And I don't think much of it, but my guy friends go crazy when they see it. They're like, oh man, Paul, you got a Jeep? That thing is sick, you must be waist deep in girls. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I didn't know that was a depth for them either. Uh, I am not waist deep. I'm not knee deep. I'd like to be toe deep. That would be a good, a good depth. My mom especially would love that as well, but... And I don't even know how you use a car to get a woman. I don't know a lot about women, but I know one thing. Do not shout to them from, their, from your vehicle. That does not impress them very much at all. So what do I do? Do I just like carry a picture of it on my phone, just pull it out like, hey, I drive this. You know what to do. It's time. I don't... Do I, do I like sign up for Uber? What, what do I do? That feels like a step back, just pulling up like, hey, you want to ride for free all the time? Like, no. <laughs> That's not impressing them. So I ended up just like seeing a group of them and just shouting out like random features. I can get 27 miles to the gallon <laughs> and tow 7,200 pounds. And they're like, good for you. But the guy next to him's like, That's amazing! 
I was like, I got the wrong car. Oh, I got the wrong car. I should have gotten a Jetta. Uh, I live in a bit of a rough neighborhood in Portland. Uh, even the milk comes in a 40 ounce. It's not a good neighborhood. It's kind of scary, but it's still Portland, Oregon. You know, like there was a drive-by shooting in my neighborhood a month ago, but it was in a Prius. So I, does that even count? No, oh, man, 57, man. I remember when I was a kid, 57 sounded like so far away. I mean, I remember, you know, just being a kid and, and, and being around my dad and, and, and thinking, okay, if I make it to that old, I'm gonna be really old. And he wasn't that old, man. But he, you know, taught me a few things, uh, how to be, uh, I guess you could say, handy. You know, you know how fathers are, they can fix everything with anything. My first car was a 1972 Ford Maverick. Had all the things that a used car had, which was not anything that worked. <laughs> you know, had the mirrors that, uh, you know, not like today, like you young folks, you got a mirror that says, object is closer than it appears. <laughs> Our mirrors it was right where it was supposed to be. <laughs> you back up your car now, you'd be like, oh, I got room. Oh, no, no. We knew what was behind us. Uh, my windshield wipers didn't work. They were not intermittent. They were just lazy. I turned them on, like, nah, man, not today, we off. You. I had the cup holders. You know, the cup holders, the one where you jam one in on the driver's side and jam one in on the passenger side. They better match colors or you're ghetto. You know, that's what we would say. You know what I didn't have that all of you had in your first car? I didn't have a gas pedal. She's looking at me like, what? No, nah, man, the gas pedal broke. The pin popped out. I didn't know about this stuff at the time, but my dad did, and we pushed the car in the driveway. He said, give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, he comes out. You are good to go. I get in the car. I start it up. I roll down the window, and I mean roll down the window and said, thanks, Dad. I love you. Put my foot down. <clears throat> flat. Nothing. Roll down the window. Hey, Dad, you didn't do anything. He said, well, did you pull the string? Did I do what? You, know, you gotta pull the string. My dad took a lawnmower string and ran it down and hooked it up. So the only way that I can accelerate is to pull the string. I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. Either. You wanna drive the car, you gotta pull the string. And it was awkward at first, but you have to learn your bearings. So I was like, okay, if I get right by here, it's 30. If I get right by here, it's 45. If I get right here, it's 55. If I get behind my back, I'm in trouble, right? <laughs> So I'm driving around, and I couldn't drive distracted because I had to keep one hand on the wheel and one hand on the string. You know, you can't, you can't hold a phone or anything like that. If I want to take a sip out of my pop, thank God for that cup holder. I just lean over and try to grab the straw with my tongue. And... <laughs> but the best thing was uh, uh, driving, coming to a red light. I look over. They're the police. I knew what I was going to do. The little voice in my head was like, don't, 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 don't. But you never listen to the little voice, right? Light turned green. I put both my feet up on the dashboard and just... They pulled me over, man. They pulled me over. And I just knew I was going to get a ticket. And the, and the policeman came out, and he started walking to the window. And I was shaking because I was a teenager, right? And I know I'm getting a ticket. I look up. Here's a $20 bill on my face. I was like, what is this? He said, man, that was the best magic trick I've ever seen. <laughs> they don't always end like that, man. Oh, jeez. He's funny. He's funny. That's actually my second minivan. Anybody got a minivan? <laughs> Woo what do you got? What do you got? <sighs> Toyota, Toyota C, that's a flagship of minivan, man. <laughs> DVD player? <sighs> man. 
that's a nice minivan. That's my second minivan. My last minivan had 183,000 miles on it. And I took it down, going to trade it in and get something like you have, something high fluting, you know, something like that. And, uh, <laughs> you, and I take it down there. And, uh, man, you know you're getting old when you look at a minivan the same way you used to look at a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> That's got the sliding doors on both sides. <laughs> That's a bad mamma jamma minivan, man. I'm you know. and, and the dude that was in the guy was like, he's like, Tom, we'll give you 500 bucks on your old minivan. Oh, come on, no, I drove it here. It's worth more than 500 bucks. So I take the wheels off of it and I put it in a trailer park and I built a deck around it. Yeah. I got 500 bucks a month now, man. It's pretty cool. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Flew into Salt Lake City and drove down here. That, on the highway, that's the most mysterious time for me. Trying to keep track of that world around you. How do you keep track of all those car names that are out there? Hundreds of different car names. How am I supposed to keep those all straight? Some cars don't have a name. All they've got is a number. That never made sense to me unless you're trying to get the biggest number. I'll give an example. Mazda's got a 2. They got a 3. They got a 5. They got a 6. Oldsmobile had an 88 and a 98. Chrysler's got a 200 and a 300. Mazda had a 323. Ford had a 500. Mazda had a 626 and a 929. Pontiac had a 1000. Audi's got a 3000, 4000, 5000. Pontiac had a 6000. Saab had a 9000. Nissan just said to heck with it. Now they make an infinity. <laughs> Top that. <laughs> Chrysler Mitsubishi's little nuts. They got a vision, an eclipse, and a mirage. A vision, which is really something to look at. An eclipse, that's something you shouldn't look at. Mirage, something you're not even really looking at. <laughs> is that your car? I think so, but I've been fooled before. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little nervous about that. They have cars named for the heart of the big city all the way on out to the sticks. For the inner city, metro, a little further out, suburban, further out still, town car. One that can't decide, town and country. Further out, they got the villager. Beyond that, they got the forester. Beyond the forest, they got the frontier. Beyond the frontier, the Yukon, the Denali, the tundra, and the outback. And way the heck out there, Mercury and Saturn. Plymouth made a Reliant. I had one, they call it that, because it made you reliant on public transportation, by golly. <laughs> can the cars do what their names sound like they can do? And if they can, I guess they can do a lot of different things. Get one that does what you need doing. If you're going someplace and there are no roads, get a Pathfinder or a Trailblazer. <laughs> if nobody's ever been there before, you'll need a Discovery or an Explorer. If you're a little bit lonely, get yourself an Escort. Yeah. Or maybe an amigo or a sidekick. You know, shop around, shop around a little bit. Get the car based on the kind of trip you want to take. You want to take a short trip, get a sprint. Get a longer trip, a journey. A hopeful trip, get a quest. A long, hard trip, an expedition or an excursion. And if you want to stay away for years, get an odyssey. Get the car based on how you're feeling, you know what I'm saying? Your mood at the time. If you want to be daring, get a venture or an intrepid. If you want to be a gentleman, get a gallant. If you want to go overseas, pick up a passport. <laughs> if you can't concentrate, get a focus! <laughs> Shut up, I got a focus over here! <laughs> if you have a large, protruding navel, get an Audi. You know, come on. <laughs> If you like to stay in shape, get a fit. If you've sort of let it slide, get an avalanche. <laughs> if you've got a score to settle, get an Avenger. If your batteries are low, pick up a Charger. And if you're in a horrible marriage, you might think about an escape. So <laughs> are you in school, 21? Very nice. You answer like a lawyer. I am, yes. What kind of car do you drive? Uh, Pontiac. A Pontiac? Did your aunt die? What happened? How'd you get the Pontiac? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
I had a feeling that was in a will. 21. We're going to leave Junior to Pontiac. He's going to be a lawyer. What do you drive, 16? A Toyota Corolla. Very nice. What kind of car does your dad drive? A truck. Your daddy drive a truck, too? And what does your dad drive? Nissan, very nice. Pontiac breaks down with you and your mama in it. Can you fix it? That's a no. You're a lawyer. That's a no. Uh, uh, uh. That's the noise it's making. <laughs> Understanding the combustible engine. You boys want to make a lot of money in your life, be a good mechanic. Because we don't know anything about cars. Understanding the combustible engine. Our country invented it. And then we gave it away to Germany and Japan. I'm not ragging on you or him. I don't know anything about cars. I have AAA. <laughs> I get a flat tire. I call AAA and a girl comes and changes that tire right in front of me in 45 minutes. I don't know anything about cars. When I was a kid, my stepdad would fart in a car. And all the kids would go, oh, man, I think somebody just farted. And my stepdad would say, no, they did not. It's the catalytic converter off that car in front of us. We believed them. I'm 45 years old. I still have no idea what a catalytic converter looks like. I just wish America would start building cars that run on normal catalytic. Conversion smells like crap. But I went down, I saw this car. It was sad. It was the car I had ever since high school. It had been ripped apart. And I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't take a lot of pride of ownership in my car but I didn't mind driving it around, except when I had to take it somewhere nice. Then it definitely felt a little bit awkward. Like, I lived in LA for about a year and a half. I was dating a girl that lived in Seattle. She flew down for the weekend. We decided to drive down the coast. We went down to Newport Beach, really nice area. I got us a Hotwire hotel, because I'm classy. <laughs> Seriously, if you guys haven't done Hotwire before, awesome deal. $100, get to stay in like a five-star hotel that you have no business being in usually while they're doing massive renovations. <laughs> they were tearing asbestos out of our room while we were sleeping, but I was like, hey, these sheets are soft, so. <laughs> but it was awkward, because as we were driving up to the hotel, it was one of those ones that has that big sort of roundabout kind of thing with like a couple of fountains in the middle, and then off to the side, they have that special area where they park all the super fancy cars. So a lot of like Maseratis and Porsches and Rolls Royce and I'm just putt-putting up the hill and Doug, and I turned to the girl I was dating, I was like, sweetie, I am not gonna valet Doug here, right? I hope that's okay, I'll just drop you off, you check in, I'll park somewhere, I'll meet you in the lobby. She's like, okay. So we pull up to the front, she gets out, the valet guy hops out, he's like, hi there, check it in. I was like, yes, she is. Uh, I'm not gonna valet, though. I I'll just park myself somewhere. And the guy's like, well, actually, we valet park all the vehicles for everybody who's staying here. I was like, okay. And then we both just sat there for a second. And he kind of was hesitating. And I swear, for a second, I really thought he was going to say, if you'd like, we could just throw this away for you, actually. We have a pit in the back that's on fire. We can just roll it on in. You can, you can pick up something new in town. So it's like, fine. I gave you the guy my keys. Gave me a little piece of paper. Went and checked in, spent the night. Next day, came down gave the guy my ticket for him to bring my car around, and while we were waiting, I turned to the girl I was dating, I was like, you know what would be hilarious? Like, just to kind of break the tension. What if when he brings my car around, I just start going nuts over the condition it's in? <laughs> like, what if I just lose it? Just pretend like I gave them a mint condition 1998 Honda Civic, <laughs> and then when they rolled Doug's sorry self around the corner, I just go nuts. Just be like, what? for 12 hours. Where did all these cracks and dents come from? This rust is awfully advanced. I thought that would be hilarious. Uh, unfortunately, before I got a chance to say anything, I looked in through the windshield and sitting on the dash was this little piece of paper with kind of the generic outline of a car on it where they had marked up all forms of previous damage so they wouldn't be liable for it. I've never felt worse for Doug in my entire life. Just... <laughs> All of his imperfections circled and X's, and somebody wrote, should have tried harder on the back. Oh, gosh. I don't know. 
so this is, you know, this is what I do. It's kind of weird to be a parent and do this job, but, you know, I'm just like a normal guy when I get home. And uh, I was a cool guy. We got some young guys here tonight. Yeah. What, what, what kind of car do you drive, man, or truck? Station wagon. Okay, well, can we do cut two on that one? Because that is not going to help this joke. Did they plant you in here to wreck that joke? Okay, I don't, I don't know. Can you, can you make sure we get a photo of this guy and not let him in to any other specials? The joke ruiner. Let's go back to paleo water drinker. All right. Here's, what kind of vehicle do you drive? Minivan. Okay, this is just not right. Not right. Not right. My joke was good, but I don't think it can top those two. Okay, how old are you? 35. 35, how old are you? 34. 34, all right, well here, okay, maybe. Here's what I would say, I had a Jeep. You can't get three car seats in your Jeep. I was like you, I had to trade it in for a minivan, but it's a top of the line minivan. It's called the Honda Emasculator. <laughs> Do you have one of those? Does it have this special feature when you get in that it gently grabs your man parts and put them in the glove compartment? Right? Because they're no use when you're the pilot of this dream-killing machine. It's not a BMW. It's more like a BM. That's how I feel about it. Some people think the toughest guy in the road is a guy driving a Hummer. No. That guy can afford a Hummer. He can afford the gas that goes in the Hummer. He's living the dream. You know you don't want to mess with? Dude driving a beat-up minivan, right, bro? We're just filled with rage and spite. We're liable to get out at any stop sign, break a juice box right out of your head. The only time we ever feel better than anybody is when he drives by in the station wagon. That's the only time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Great. Now you guys have to tour with me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is the most screwed up comedy special ever. <laughs> You've watched them on TV. They don't talk to people in the audience. <laughs> this is wrecked. <laughs> It's okay. I, uh, thank you. I think. I don't know. I'm just surprised I even made it up here. I drove here from Kansas. I'm surprised I made it in my car. Anybody else drive a piece of junk car? Yeah. I saw a few of them out front. I know you're in here. I saw a couple of them. Well, don't feel bad if you're driving junk. I bet you got me beat. I'm driving one of them 70 station wagons with the wood paneling on the side. Oh, yeah. Chicks dig it. You've seen those cars, got the wood paneling, and it blows this blue smoke all the time. I call it Puff the Tragic Wagon. <laughs> it's a piece of junk. I drove through a snowstorm in Colorado coming here. I found out my windshield wipers have two speeds, off and smear. That's what I got, off and smear. <laughs> it's always broke down. I have to ride with people a lot. I rode with my dad about a week ago. You guys ever want to find out if your dad's getting old? Take a ride with him. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, my dad's in the fast lane on the highway going 38, you know, he's <laughs> chain smoking camels with the windows up. I'm like, thanks dude, I'll have a tumor time to get to Target. This is awesome, could you, could you crack it? I love my dad, he's a good guy, but he is hard to ride with. We can't even agree on a radio station in the car, you know, like my dad likes rock and roll, but he don't, he don't like my rock and roll. He likes oldies, you know, he likes Elvis. You guys remember Elvis, that big fat dude from the 70s, Elvis? <laughs> That's the way I remember him. I don't remember the young, cool Elvis. I just remember the big banana sandwich bloated Elvis. That's what I remember. <laughs> My dad loves Elvis. He don't even think he's dead yet. 
He don't. He thinks he's on some island out there with Bigfoot and a bunch of chicks or something. <laughs> and he hates my music. He's always complaining. He's like, I don't understand all this screaming rock and roll stuff you listen to. Okay, Dad, you want to explain Shamalama Ding Dong to me? What is that? You know, <laughs> how messed up you got to be to write Papa Mow Mow, Papa Mow Mow, Papa Mow Mow. Okay, just <laughs> settle down, Chubby Checker. You're scaring a dog. All right. <laughs> It's good. it's good to be back here in the West. Uh, I live in New York now. I came back here uh, for this and to visit my family often. Uh, it's also, there's different challenges being here than in the city. Like for instance, recently while I was here, I hit a deer with my car. Yeah, but it's not what you guys think, okay? I did it completely on purpose. Now, how? <laughs> How that happened was, I was driving, minding my own business, and I'm going down the street, and I looked over, and I saw a dog and a deer in a parking lot together, okay? And I was like, oh, they're friends, like in Disney. But I was wrong. They were not friends, they were enemies, and they were fighting pretty hard, okay? All right, I don't, and I didn't even know, the deer was hooving the dog, I didn't even know they did that, all right? And the dog hated it, so the dog goes running away from the deer to escape, and the dog comes running across the street, I'm driving down, and the deer comes chasing after the dog, and I had a decision to make. Yeah. Listen, it was an Australian Shepherd, okay? It's crunch time. I hit that deer so hard with my car. <laughs> I swerved in everything. Listen, I hit that deer like my stepdad was riding it. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. That is what I like, a crowd that is not a fan of my stepfather. <laughs> Nobody likes you, Joe! <laughs> I shouldn't use his real name, but whatever. <laughs> so, by the way, I should not say this, but you guys seem cool, so I'm gonna say it anyway. Feels so good to hit something that big with your car. It was awesome. <laughs> yes. And I didn't want to have to do it, but if I'm gonna do it, it might as well be cool. <laughs> Dude, I, like, I, I don't know. It felt cool to hit something that big. I, I get what old people are up to in farmer's markets. I get it. <laughs> like, I understand. Now when I'm on the couch and I'm watching the news and they're like, an elderly gentleman ran over six people and slammed his car into Best Buy today. I'm just sitting there like, live your best life, Grandpa. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. You didn't fight in World War II not to hit someone with your car. Get it. So, listen, I feel some of you in the audience being worried about the deer, and that's fair. But don't be, okay? I draw, the deer is fine. I drive a 2001 Saturn. The deer is fine, okay? <laughs> It seems like you guys might know a thing or two about cars. That is not a good car. Uh, yeah. My car is so bad that when I bought it, I parked it on the street, and that night, I assume some kids spray-painted the word wow on the side of it? And I did not care, okay? Yeah. So... I'm in my 2001 Saturn, the dog runs past, the deer is coming, I slam on the gas, I gave it everything I had. All that happened, okay, was the deer rolled up onto the side of my, like, hood on its side, rolled back onto its hooves, and then just looked at me like, what was that about, man? <laughs> and I'm just in my car, awkward, like, uh, I'm trying to kill you! <laughs> The deer just is like, I don't, I don't need this. And it left to go do deer stuff or whatever. <laughs> so the deer is gone. I'm sitting in my car. I can't believe this just happened. And I realized the dog is nowhere to be found. The dog escaped. Yes, I'm an American hero. Yeah. I deserve this. 
I know. It's like the troops, then me, then firefighters. I'm feeling very good. <laughs> this is literally the most on board anyone has ever been for that premise. I used, to, I used to put myself above the troops even as a joke. People were like, pull it back. You gotta be fine. <laughs> so, I'm feeling good. I'm in the street. I just hit a deer with my car. I'm a good person. I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm jazzed up. I'm like pumped up on adrenaline. I just can't believe that happened. I'm like dancing in my car. I'm just like, oh, I was crazy. And I look over and I see a family. <laughs> They're wearing their Sunday best, like a mom and a dad, and they're pushing a baby stroller down the sidewalk. And I was like, oh, they probably saw everything. They definitely want to talk to me. So I do a U-turn. I pull up to them. Have you ever seen a guy pick up a baby stroller to get away from you faster? Yeah. Yeah. In my car, like, what is this guy's problem? And then I realized, oh no, they have no context for what just happened. They probably didn't even see the dog. They just see some guy in the middle of the city with his face covered in tattoos, driving the world's worst car, just clobber a deer for no reason. That guy sits in the street and thinks about it for a while. Spots your family. Does a U-turn. Revealing the fact that he has the word wow spray painted on the side of his car. Struggles to get his window down because he drives a 2001 Saturn. And then he looks out at your wife and kid and just goes, I'm a hero! <laughs> he left so fast. He left his wife. He did not care. Hustling. <laughs>